did get it. I won't say struggle with it, but it didn't seem like it was 100% clear. So we're going to do the piece where you choose, excuse me, something from a drop down and it will display uh, on the page. going to do that with, let's see, with which table here. See, I'm going to not use the nutrition database because that doesn't look very well designed. We'll pull the Northwoods one over instead, and we'll use that. Let me describe what um, I want to do, and then, then we'll um, actually go and do it. And it never hurts, as I stress in all my classes, to think about what you're going to do before you're going to do it, you know, to plot out uh, what you intend to do. So let's talk about what I want to do in this example. All right. What I want to do in this example is do something like this. I want to start out with a page that has a drop down of all faculty ranks. There is an F rank table, and I want the drop down to contain a list of all the, the faculty rank, full professor, associate professor, and so on. Based on what the user selects in that field, I want it to pull up the faculty members that meet this criteria. So it will filter out based on uh, the type of faculty member they are, what their faculty rank is. All right. Very similar to the search that we did, the difference being instead of having a freeform text field where we can type it in, we are choosing from a list of uh, options that are from the drop down. And the op options that come from the drop down um, come from a database. They're not going to be hard coded. All right. The whole thing again, we're making database driven so that if a new rank is created or anything along those lines, we don't have to go and change our code at all. It's simply added to the database and then it can be used. That's the first part and this is very much in line with the exercise we did last time. After we get that, we're going to extend it to make this a link. All right. We're going to make, say, the faculty last name a link that will go to a page that will show all the information about the faculty member, the full information about the faculty, and a list of students that that faculty person advises. All right. This is sort of what I mean about a header detail. In other words, the header is a faculty person. The detail is related rows to that table. In other words, a list of all the faculty people that that faculty, or all the students rather, that that faculty person advises. All right. We'll put this off to the side for now. We'll come back and talk about it later. Let's get this part going, this piece working. And as I said before, it's a good idea to have um, an idea of the classes that you need and the, the, the components that you're going to assemble on your page before you begin. What are some of the components that we're going to need for that page to work?
is a component a database? What is, what is, pardon me? Okay. All those things are true. We're going to access tables in a database. Tables represent an entity. But what is the specific ASP.NET component that we're going to use? Yes. All right, one's going to be a drop down. So we're going to have a drop down to this. What's this going to be? Grid view. How are we going to populate these? What's the name of the ASP.NET component, though? Yeah, yeah, we're going to populate them from the database, but but how do we do we you know how what is the component that we use in ASP.NET to retrieve stuff from a database? SQL document uh, an SQL data source. Now the question is: Is do we have one or do we have two of these? Do we have one or two of these SQL data sources? Actually, we have two because we have two different things that we want to retrieve. All right? We want to retrieve from the faculty rank table a list of faculty ranks. So if we were to look at the database, let's go and open up the database. There's one connection strain, okay. right, but there will be two SQL data sources. If we're going to look at this database, we'll see, we can look at the relationships between them, but the two relevant tables for this first one are faculty and faculty rank. The faculty rank has a list of all the valid uh, faculty ranks, all right, and I'll go delete sort of the goofy ones. Oops, I'm not allowed to. All right. Um, this has a list of faculty ranks. So in other words, the statement that's going to populate that drop down is going to be something like select maybe star from F rank. All right. So that's one SQL statement that we're going to use. Each SQL statement, each select, each query is a separate SQL data source because that's not going to give us the stuff down here. All right. What's the stuff down here uh, going to look like? Well, it'll be something like this. It'll be select star or a list of columns from faculty where F rank equals something. And what is it going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to the value that we're going to have in this drop down. So really, we have two SQL statements going on here. One gives us simply the list of faculty ranks. The other retrieves the faculty members that match the rank that we've selected. So really two distinct things here. Um, a common mistake for students is to try to do too much with one data source, thinking, okay, I'll have a data source that will contain both these things. And that's not effective. Remember, with the components, typically um, it works best if the components all do just one little piece of, of the show. It makes for more maintainable um, and it works better. It would be a stretch to try to do this with one um, SQL data source. I'm not saying you couldn't, but it'd probably be, be um, probably be a bit of a pain and, and inefficient. So we have two SQL data sources. All right. The way to look at it again is think of the visual control you need and think of where the data is coming from. All right. So in that drop down, keep in mind that we're not pulling the faculty ranks from the faculty table there. We're pulling the faculty ranks from the faculty rank table. All right, um, because we want a list of all the valid faculty ranks. And that's not found in the faculty table. That's found in the faculty rank table. All right. Um, and the bottom grid view, we want to populate from the faculty table. Uh, and we would specifically, we want those that um, uh, match that um, faculty rank that we select in the drop down. Now, if we look at this, 
Let's look at the two tables for a second here. We have faculty rank, all right, which has two fields, F rank and F rank desk description. Now, as we know, if we look at the de design for these two tables, the primary key of the faculty rank table is the F rank field. Uh, in other words, it's, it's, a, uh, it's like a little abbreviation for the faculty rank. The description is the more detailed um, description of it. That's what people are apt to understand. In other words, INST, ASST, ASSO, either one of those, you know, ASST, either one of those could be assistant or associate. It's not necessarily clear to someone reading it what ASST is. All right. So therefore, we're going to want to display the frank description in the drop-down because the code is probably not something that people are, are going to at least as easily understand. The description is going to be something that's going to be more clear. All right. Now, if we look at the faculty table, though, what we're going to use to hook to the faculty table is the abbreviation. All right. So the abbreviation is what we're going to use to do that. That's very common when we have a drop-down. Right? We have the primary key that is what is stored in another table as a foreign key. And that's what we're going to need to use in the select statement. However, that key may not be something that's easily understood. So therefore, we want to display some sort of description. All right, um, for um, for that uh, um, you know for that entity in the drop down. So it's very common that our drop down is going to consist of a description that's visible and behind the scenes the primary key. This again is where multiple part keys would be a pain. If this had a two part key, it would be very difficult to represent that in a drop down. All right, let's go and create just a drop down piece of this. All right, I'm going to do this a little at a time. And I will go in and call my new page we'll inherit from the master page and we'll call it faculty by rank. Or rather, that's what we intended to call it. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Let's go and delete it and try again. So I'll go in, new file. Faculty by rank. And we'll select our master page again. And there we go. Usually what I do when I'm working on something is I will right mouse on it and say, let's make it the start page. That way I don't have to worry about where, what I'm pointing to because usually which one you're looking at is the one that will make the start page. And you don't always want that to happen. So I'll go and I'll make the um, faculty by rank the start page. Now I'm going to start out and I'm going to create my drop down first. And I'm just going to want to get that to work. All right. So, I'll go and I will drag over my drop down. Put it there. Then I will go and dra drag my SQL data source over for it. And I would suggest changing the name from SQL data source 1 to maybe something like data source ranks just so that it's obvious and it's clear exactly what you're using that for. Now, I'm going to go in oops, and I'm going to configure that data source. Keep in mind that we've already done something with the database in this application. This is an example we picked up on from 
last week or the week before or something like that. All right. Therefore, I'm not going to click on new connection because we already have a connection that's stored in the web config file. Instead, I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to use that connection. All right. Again, one database relates to one connection. You don't want to have multiple connections uh, to the same database because, again, if something changes, you'd have to change all of them. All right. We can then go in and put in our select statement, or we can go in and we can put in, we can just sort of use this little very simple GUI tool to go and grab faculty rank, faculty description, and I'll order it by faculty, or faculty rank description. I'll test it, and I'll finish. Now, the last thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go and say that that dropdown is connected to that data source, DS ranks. Now, when we do that, it asks us for the two things that we want, the display field and the value. The value is what's behind the scenes. The value is what the .NET framework is going to see as being the value of this dropdown. So again, as we said before, the description, the text that we want to display on the screen what we, is something we want to be intelligible by people. Therefore, we don't want the faculty rank because we already said that might be unclear to, for people to know what it is. We want the, the faculty rank description. Now, the value is going to be behind the scenes we want that to be the faculty rank. Again, because we use the primary key of this table as a foreign key in the faculty table. So that's what we're going to need to use in the where clause of the second data source that we create. Now, another way to put it is keep in mind what a drop down looks like, what the HTML looks like. It's a select and it's a list then of options. Something like that. All right. That's the HTML code for a drop down. And so on down the line. That's the code that's going to get, get generated. And we'll see that in a minute here. This is the text of that drop down, and that should be what's descriptive or intelligible by a human, by the user that's using this. This is the value, and this ought to be the primary key to the table. So when we go and create this, we specify that we want the, dis the, the display to be what's intelligible for the user, that is the description, and the data field um, for the value of it is, is the key, is the faculty rank. So now we have just a drop down. Let's go and let's make sure that that works. Click on that. And it will pull up a page with just a drop down on it. And that drop down should be populated with a list of all the faculty ranks. It should show the description. Uh, and behind the scenes, you should see the primary key. All right, there's our drop down. If we look, there's all the descriptions. And if we do a view source, we see that the value of each of the options is the primary key that corresponds to the description, just like we asked it to be. All right. So now let's go and make it work with the other drop down or with the other uh, visual control which is the uh, grid view. So I'll go and I will drag 
the grid view over. Why am I using a grid view rather than a details view? Because it could be a list. It could be more than one. A details view is typically used when there's only one. I'll go and grab my SQL data source. All right. I'll configure that data source. Again, I'm not going to create a new connection. I'm simply going to use the one that's defined in the web config file under the name of Northwood connection string. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to custom write the SQL statement here. So I'll click that. And I'm going to say select FID FF name FL name from faculty where F rank equals question mark. All right? Let me go paste this into Notepad so that we can see exactly what I'm up to here. Select FID, FL name, or FF name, FL name from faculty or F rank equals question mark. This is a single table select. All right. This is a list of columns that we want. Even though my, drop, my, my grid view is probably just going to display the first and last name, I um, am going to pick the faculty ID because it's generally a good idea to pick the primary key, especially when we think in terms of what we want to do with that second page. We need to tell the second page which faculty member we want to see. And I'm going to put for good measure order by FL name, FF name. So we'll go and we'll put that in there. Now when we click next, we have to say where that question mark is coming from. All right? That question mark is a, is, a, is a parameter that we're going to fill in at runtime. And it has to come from somewhere, right? Uh, in this particular example, where it's coming from is the drop down. So I'm going to pick that it's going to come from a control. Which control? Drop down list one. Not sure why it shows it twice, but that's the one we want. Now we can test the query and we can type in one of the codes and we can see, well, there's a list of the people that are going to show up. And finish. We then have to go in and combine that grid view with that data source. And we're ready to go. So now if we go and do this, All right. That person has that goofy rank. I must have been just playing around when I was editing this database. Let's go and pick the, the rank of four. Ooh. Didn't work. What do you suppose is wrong? Go ahead. We need an auto post back. We need an auto post back. In other words, the code that runs, runs on the server. The code that accesses the database and populates that, that um, uh, SQL data source, which in turn is bound to the visual control, runs on the server. That SQL statement runs on the server. Therefore, if we're sitting here simply changing the value of the dropdown, we're still on the client side. We have not yet made a request to the server for new information. Now. I could do one of two things. I could put a button here that said submit, and so I could change the value in the drop down and then click submit, and then it would go to the server, and then it would do its thing. Or, since we're only talking about a single uh, field, you know, we can, we can make that an auto post back. And what's an auto post back? Well, when the value changes, it submits it to the server. The server can do its thing and retrieve the new data. So, I'll go here and click on that, 
and click enable auto post back and then we're ready to go all right So now it brings up the first one who's in that category. Now if I pick the full professor, I see the list of people that are full professors. If I pick instructor, I see the people that are instructors and so on. All right. So what's different about this than the previous examples? Well, we had a where clause in there, which we did in some examples, but not all of them. Um, and the other thing that's different is our selection criteria wasn't just a plain old text box where you could freeform type a person's name in and do a search that way, but it actually itself got populated from a database. And um, therefore we had two SQL data sources because we wanted to do two different things. We wanted a list of faculty ranks and we wanted a list of faculty people that match that rank. That's two different pieces of data two different lists of data. And therefore, we have two different data sources. Now, we only have one connection string. That's our goal, right? We don't want to have more than one connection string, at least not per, you know, one per database. Let's assume that we're only dealing with one database in this application. We would only want one connection string. Because we want the ability to go in, and if something changes, if we convert to Oracle, let's say, or if we can convert to SQL Server or some other database platform, we should be able to just go into the web config file and change this connection string to the appropriate code and have the appropriate parameters for an Oracle database and then we'll be able to, to do its thing. Now the other thing that I want you to be aware of is notice that in the connection string there's no exact physical path that's given. Notice that it uses the um, environment variable of data directory. That's a good thing because then when I pop it on my machine it doesn't have to have the exact same folders that are on your machine. So you can run this on your thumb drive which might be drive E or drive F or whatever and it will work okay. I could copy it to my machine and it will be on drive C, maybe in a totally different set of folders, and it will work. Because that means use the data directory that's associated with this application. By default, that will be that app data folder. All right, so it will look for that database, northwoods.accdb, in the default data directory folder, which is appdb. All right. Again, it's a little tricky starting it up and getting the first one created. Um, once you do that, though, you simply use the same connection string over and over again. Depending on how you create it, it might try to put a physical path in there, in which case you need to edit it and remove the physical path and put in the, the pipe, data directory pipe. All right, questions? Yes? Um, on the drop down, when we executed it? Yes. Right. Yeah, what, what we have to do, remember that a, a drop down has to have a value, right? So what we would have to do is we would have to go in and add a dummy value at the beginning of the drop down that would say please select faculty rank. No, I'm not going to create a dummy record in a database. It's going to be in the drop down. Um, what's wrong with creating a dummy record in the database? It looks like a real rank. Someone may not understand it as a dummy record and assign it to someone. And if I run reports that say how many different ranks we have, it's going to say we have eight ranks instead of seven ranks because it's going to count the dummy one. In general, you don't want to mess up your database by putting in um, rows that look like they're a member of an entity, but really it means something else. 
All right, and therefore we would add to the interface um, that um, we may or may not do that one. We'll, I, I want to get through the rest of this example. We can, you know, if we get to the end of it and we still have time, remind me to go back and, and we can take a look at um, take a look at adding that. Um, but that's a good question because uh, when we get to maintaining da uh, uh, databases, and we have the we have a screen to edit or to add a new faculty person. We don't necessarily want to default that to the top one on the list, right? Because if we default it to the top one on the list and we forget to enter it, then everyone becomes an assistant professor or whatever. We want to have a dummy item at the top and force them to enter something in there. All right? Other question? Yes? Well, you, you could, that there's a lot of different ways that you could do it. If I was having an application that had a lot of different grid views that may have had may have different stuff in it, but I would all want them to look the same, then I could put the style in the uh, the default CSS, the, the 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 one that was on the um, on the master page. If I wanted something that was just very special just for this page, I could put the style code right on this page. So you really you have, you have a choice of how you want to do it. Again, reusability, you'd put it in the external style sheet. If it was something that was really unique just to this page and you didn't have another instance of it uh, that you weren't concerned about, you could go in and, and do that. Remember, you could, you could put something on a page. You could put a style rule in an external file that relates to a div with a certain ID. All right, And if only one of your pages has that ID, well, that's the only one that will get that style rule. It won't like cause the pages that don't have a div with that ID to blow up or anything. They just won't get that particular style rule if, if a page doesn't have a certain div. So yeah, you can, you can incorporate it into sort of the, the main CSS file or uh, you, know, you can put it in um, the individual page. So it's kind of your choice as a designer of how to do that. Other questions? All right. Let's look at part two of this. And let's, let's analyze what we want. Here's what we... Yeah. Here's the page that we just created. All right. What we want to be able to do is, let's say we're going to make... And right now it shows the ID the first name and the last name. Let's say we make the ID a link to go to this page. And when we go to this page we want to display everything about that one faculty person and then we want to display a list of students that that faculty person advises. All right. So, let's call this page faculty detail. All right. We'll call that faculty detail.aspx. What should the URL associated with this link be? Well, we know the first part of it is going to be faculty detail dot ASPX, but what else are we going to have to pass as part of the URL to that second page? The ID of the faculty person that we selected, right? The whole idea is, is we click on this first link for the first faculty person and the details of that first faculty person appears. All the details about them, a list of all the students that they advise. We pick on the last person on the list. The details page appears and it has the details for that faculty person along with the list of students that they advise. So we somehow have to get from the first page to the second page the ID of the person that we clicked on. Well, one of the ways 
that we can do that is we can pass it as part of the query string. Remember with the URL there's, there's associated a query string. And so therefore, I might want the query string to look something like this. ID equals and then some value that I'm going to run uh, that, that will be whatever that particular person's um, faculty ID is. All right. So that's what that's the change we're going to have to make to this page. We're going to have to change the ID number. Instead of just being a plain old text field, we're going to have to change it to be a link. And we want to display the ID number. And we want the link behind that ID number to be faculty detail.aspx question mark ID equals and then we whatever the value of that particular faculty person's ID is. Now, what about this page? What controls do we have on this page? First of all, what visual controls do we have? What UI type controls do we have? What's this going to be in? Well, well, there's a lot of information about a faculty person. So we could conceivably do it with a set of labels. All right. But probably the easier way to do it is we can do it with a details view. Remember, there is a grid view and a details view that sort of are very similar. The difference being is that a, uh, a grid view is meant for uh, multiple uh, uh, rows and a details view is meant for just one row. So it's just showing one thing. The list of students then, the word list is a tip off, we want that to be a grid view. How many SQL data sources do we have? Okay, we have. Well, let's think of the select statements that we would want to call here. What select statement are we going to use to populate this details view? Be something like select star from faculty where FID equals whatever's on the query string. All right. What's going to populate this? What's going to populate this is something like select star from student where FID equals the value on the query string. So those two get populated from two different SQL statements. Therefore, there's two different uh, SQL data sources. All right. So let's go and let's do this a bit at a time. Question? OK. That's, that's fine. Well, when we do the link, we're going to be passing the ID number. Yeah, just the ID number. And we'll use the ID number to retrieve the detail for the faculty person. And we'll use the faculty ID number to, dis to, to pull the list of students that are associated with that faculty member. All right. So let's go and let's do this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this faculty by rank to include a link. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say edit columns. And I'm going to delete the ID number that's already there. All right. And instead, I'm going to say I want to add a hyperlink field. And I can then bump it up to the top if I want. All right. Now the hyperlink field. What field do we want to display? We said we wanted to display the ID number. So I'll pick that I wanted to display the faculty ID. What field or fields do I want to include in the URL? 
Well, if you remember, I said my SQL statement here is going to be pulling FID off the query string. So we have to pass on the query string the ID field. So the field that I want here is FID. Now you do have the potential to pass multiple fields if you need to. But again, um, for any number of reasons, it's probably a good idea just to pass the primary key to it. All right. Now, this is the tricky part because we have to say how the URL is going to be formatted. In other words, the URL isn't just going to be that faculty ID, right? Let's say the first person has a faculty ID of 12. The URL of that link isn't going to be that. Oops. There we go. The URL isn't going to be that. A href equals 12, assuming the ID is 12. What do we want it to be? We want the URL to look something like this. A href equals faculty detail dot ASPX question mark ID equals 12. So again, we have a portion of it, just like our SQL statements, we have a portion of this that's hard-coded, a portion of it that's going to get, get filled in by something. The portion that's hard-coded is going to be this. So we want the URL to be faculty detail dot ASPX ID equals, and then we want to pop in the value of the ID. All right. So, I'll put that in here for this field is the data navigate URL format string. It's what, how we're going to format that URL. And I want it to start with faculty detail dot ASPX question mark ID equals and then I use brace zero brace. And what that means is, let's go and pull that in the notepad. What that means is, in this position, I'm going to put the first element on my list of fields. All right? Here's my list of fields that I want to be included in the URL. I only really want the faculty ID, right? I have the other one, you know, I, I don't have anything else I want to put there. I could put more than one, but I only want that one field. So the first field, the way we designate the first field is that's element zero because we start numbering with zero. And so therefore I say for the URL format string faculty detail dot ASPX question mark ID equals bracket zero bracket. All right. So Let's see if that works now. Let's run it. And how can we tell it works? If the URL of the link is what we'd expect it to be. So if we pick full professor, Mike Jones has an ID of 23 apparently. If I hover my mouse over that link, it says faculty detail dot ASPX question mark ID equals 23. All right. This one. 32, and so on. We could also do a view source and look for the links that way and verify that they're correct. So now we have that part correct. What we have to do now is work on the second part of it. All right. Um, and the way that we can work on the second part is, we'll go here, close out of this, Go 
go up to new file. I'll pick a web form and call it faculty detail. Inherit from the master page. And again, in the spirit of just doing a piece of it at a time, I'm going to first pull up all the information about the faculty member. So I'll do the details view and SQL data source for that guy. And then once I get that working, I'll go and I'll add the student in. All right. So let's go here and let's pick our details view. All right, let's pick our SQL data source, configure it. Again, we've already, we've already um, done a connection string here, so we don't want a new connection string. We just want to use the one that we've used before. What do we want to display? We want to go in and say select star from faculty where faculty ID equals something, right? We use the question mark to designate that it's a parameter. Please don't interrupt my class like this. It's at 6.30. Okay, all right. Okay, select star from faculty where FID equals question mark. All right. That question mark is something that we're going to fill from somewhere, and that's not so different than what we've done before. What's different from what we've done before is we're getting it from a different place. On the, on the first page that we did for today, uh, we got it from a drop down. And um, last week or whenever we did this, we got it from uh, a text box. Here we're getting it from the query string. So I click Next, and it's going to ask me to go in and supply the values for all these fields. All right, all our parameters. Let's start with the first parameter. It's not coming from a control. It's coming from the query string. Now. What's the name of the query string field that we're going to find the faculty ID? Does anyone recall? Well, let's look at our notes, see if that comes in handy. I said I wanted the URL to look like this. Faculty detail.aspx id equals. So the name of the query string field is id. It's not FID, all right? It's just id. Will that pose a problem? No. As long as we call it the same thing when we create the link and the same thing when we pull it off the query string, then that won't cause a problem. We could call it Fred if we wanted to, as long as we called it the same when we created the link and the same when we uh, pulled, it off, uh, pulled it off the link. All right? So, say ID. All right? Next, I can run the query and test it. Yeah. I can run the query and test it. Um, there's person two. They have that on there. All right. And we're good to go. All right. Finish. And we can run this. And we can go in and pick someone, click on that, and we get. A problem. What's our problem? 
I know my problem is I'm still I'm having a hard time trying to concentrate after being interrupted. <laughs> What's the problem here? Look at the detail view. Does anything look suspicious about that? Yeah, I didn't put the data source on the detail view. So we'll go in here and whoops. We'll pick choose data source and I will pick that data source. And now, notice now that, that grid or that details view shows the actual fields from that select. So that looks a lot better than what it did before. You could sort of tell by looking at it before that it wasn't hooked to anything. So now if I go and run this, I should get the results I want. <laughs> there we go. And of course we can format this a lot of different ways. I'm not spending too much time on formatting, but you could, you could go in and you could arrange this to be several different ways. There are other ways that you can um, display stuff too, but the details view is sort of a nice, straightforward, very convenient one. So it's a good one to start with. Well, you could do a set of labels, yeah, and populate it that way. All right. But since there's building controls to do that, you, you should have a good reason for wanting to, to, to deviate from the things that are built in. Right? You know, why reinvent the wheel? If, if something is, if there's a control that will allow you to do some of the stuff more easily, then, then you might as well take advantage of it. But the details view is just format. The details view is what? Uh, vertical format. Like okay. Okay. It, yeah, that's true. That's why there's other things that you could, uh, other controls you can do. In addition, you can convert individual columns in the details view to what are called template columns if you want to rearrange it. Um, so you do have some flexibility with that. All right. Um, and again, I suppose the ultimate flexibility is say, well, we're not going to use any of these built-in controls. We'll do it all ourselves by using labels and text boxes and so on. And the, the upside of that is you can get it to look exactly the way that you want it to. The downside of that is you'll have, you'll have to do all the work yourself. All right. Questions? Yes. No, this is a grid. This is the first page. This is a grid view with a drop down. As we pick that, we get the details view. All right. Now we want to go in and display all the students that um, this person uh, advises. So we'll go in and. We will add a grid view to this. And we'll add another SQL data source. And we'll configure the data source. Is it student or student? Select star from student where FID equals question mark. And again, we go here. Where is that going to come from? It's going to come from the query string. What's the field name? It's called ID. And we have the same problem we had before. I forgot to go back in and associate that grid view with the data source. All right. And now as we go through. We can see their information and a list of the students that 
um, that person um, advises. And of course, we can go in to format that. We could remove columns if we wanted to. We could give more descriptive labels and, and so on for that. Questions? Yeah. Okay, previously today or previously on another day? Another day. Okay. Um, All right. When, when, you, when you introduced the uh, interview, mm -hmm. did you have a different uh, SQL source or something at that time? I'm not following your question. I mean, the example is on Angel. Uh, what, well, what, 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 what is the question? Right. So, so you want to pass everything on the query string from the faculty member. Um, it, it is possible, but in general, I'd rather not do that. All right. I'd rather very clear. The other to come to the same details page. I'll link my search to that same details page. All right? And if all I have to do is pass the ID, all I have to do is pass the ID. All right? So regardless of, of all that, um, again, it's, it's usually not a good idea to pass giant volumes of data uh, on, on the query string. So conceivably, yeah, in theory, you could pass everything on the query string um, from there. But if you notice, in my example, I'm only pulling out the first name and last name and ID number in, 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 uh, in the first grid view. So I would have to change that uh, statement to pull a bunch more stuff in there. And that would be more stuff that I would have to retrieve for every faculty person just so that I could pass all that stuff over to the, the next page. I would just as soon do another query and, and do that. Just makes then this self-contained. It doesn't depend on having to get all that other stuff from, from that. All right. So yeah, theoretically you could do that, but that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be the way I would, I would choose to do it. All right. Um, let's see, a couple of things. Um, number one, we had the question, how could we put a dummy value in the dropdown so that... Um, it didn't default to the first one and didn't show the first one. And, and that could be significant if you're talking about a large amount of data. Because if you're talking about a large amount of data and it defaulted to the first one, it might have to go through a lot to get all the data associated with the first category or rank, in which case they may not be interested in seeing that rank. It would be better off to say, have a dummy selection, please select rank. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go to my faculty by rank page. All right. I'm going to double click to go to the code behind. Oops. Right, I can click on the code behind. And questions like this um, have two parts. All right. The two parts are what code do I write and the second part of the question is probably almost the harder part of the question is where do I put that code. All right. Um, 
If we look in the code behind, we'll notice that there, just like there was events associated with the button when we did that before, there was an on-click event and some other events, there are events associated with all the different controls. I'm going to pick the drop-down control because that's the one that looks like it's the most relevant here, right? I want to do something with the drop-down. And I'm going to pick, whoops, the drop-down list. I'm going to pick the event data bound. Why am I saying that? Because I know, and I remember I've done this before. The first time that you go and try to do this, though, it can be very tricky to, to do this. One thing to keep in mind is you'll notice that oftentimes, and I don't think we've even encountered this in, in, uh, in, in other, uh, 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 this semester yet, is notice that there's two events. There's a binding and a bound. You know, one implies future tense, one implies fast, uh, past tense. Or actually, one implies present tense and one implies past tense. So the data binding event is going to go forth uh, and be executed before the data is bound to its data source. All right? The data bound event is going to happen after the visual control, after the dropdown, is bound to its data source. So that's a more logical place to put it, because if we put it in the binding event, when we retrieve the data from the data source, we'll wipe out the stuff that was there, that we put in manually. So what we're going to do is we're going to let it do its thing, bind it to the database, and then when we're all done, we're going to go and add a dummy thing to it. So I'm going to put in the data bound event, and I'm going to say, Drop down list one dot items dot add notice I have choices of how to do this. And it's going to add it to the end of the collection. I don't want it at the end of the collection. I want to insert. And I can specify where I want to insert it. So I can say zero. In other words, I want it to appear at the top of the list. And I can say, please select rank. If you notice, whenever you do this, it shows one of two. We'll come back to this more uh, in, in future um, exercises. But whenever you see one of two, it means that that function is overloaded. All right. What does it mean to overload a function? Um, you, it is possible to have two functions with the same name, provided they have a different list of arguments. Different in terms of number of arguments or types or combination of numbers and types. So for example, the first version of this insert function accepts an integer and a string. The section, second version accepts an integer and a list item object. Now in future examples, we'll do a list item object. Uh, but for now, we'll just put a string in there. And so this should work to do what you described. Please select rank. And it doesn't show anyone because no one has a rank of please select rank. Then I go in and pick someone and then it goes and shows them. All right. Um, the, the lesson, the bigger lesson here is, is uh, number one, a reminder that we can do almost anything programmatically to any of the controls on the page. All right. So that got populated from the database. That's fine. We could write custom code to add a selection on there. All right. And not have to worry about putting some dummy value in the database or something like that that's going to sort of cloud our, our data. All right. The second lesson 
uh, about this is, or, or I guess continuing the first lesson, is it may take a little while to figure out exactly what to do. You know, it's object oriented. Um, you, you know, you, you can go in and, and, and that's where understanding the .NET framework and the different controls on it will help you to understand how to write uh, the code to do that. The other issue is understanding where to put the code because we could put this code in several different places and it wouldn't work. All right. For example, just for laughs, let's go and move this code to the data binding event. I'll move it from the data bound to the data binding. don't work. Why not? Well, exactly the reasoning that I said before. I added that item, then it went and hooked that drop down to that data source. And in hooking that drop down to the data source, it wiped out anything that was there, so it wiped out my item. So I couldn't do it in the binding event because that happens prior to the data populating that, that drop down. I can do it though in the bound event because that happens after I bound it to uh, the data source. And so anything I do there will take. For similar reasons, I couldn't put it anywhere else. Um, I won't say anywhere else, I'll say many of the other places. All right, I couldn't put it in some of these other places as well. But I can put it in there. All right. And we should be okay. Now, where will we pick up next time? We'll pick up next time, number one, doing more complex select statements. Um, we've just really been focusing on single table selects. We'll talk about when you have to join tables together. Uh, we may even talk about aggregate functions and showing, um, you know, not necessarily all the detail, but just showing totals. Maybe, for example, on the faculty detail page, I don't want to see every single student that that person advises. I just want to see a number. How many students does that person advise? All right. Then maybe if I click on that number, then it goes and pulls up a list of all, all those students. All right. The other thing I want to do is if you notice in this, there's a place, or there's a field rather, in the faculty table for the name of an image. We probably don't want to display the name of the image, right? We probably want to display the actual image. So we'll look at doing that as well next time. Lastly, if this page, if someone gets the idea of accessing this page this way and not passing anything on the query string, we'll look at what to do with that to, to keep something like that from happening because that's kind of kind of goofy. You know, if someone typed in the URL and didn't supply the proper values, then um, you know it would display a blank page like this, which which probably isn't good. What we can do is if they try to access this page and don't supply an ID in the the query string, then um, we can bounce them back to the to the page with the list so that they can put uh, select their faculty person, or we can do something at least. All right, I will go and post this example to Angel. Then I'll be upstairs uh, for lab. <laughs>